Right, so the FlySky i6X has a new firmware update and that's OpenTX version 1.8 and that has a few improvements. So let's see what those are. So very firstly, when I turn on the radio transmitter. So firstly, the EEPROM data has been changed and you'll have to set up the models once more. Now, whenever you power up the radio, you will get this failsafe warning and it will say that failsafe is not set. So press any key to continue. This warning will be very helpful as a reminder that if you don't have failsafe set up, you should set it up. Otherwise, there is a chance that you can lose your model. So let me just recreate my models and I'll get back. All right, so I finished setting up the models. And if I turn on the radio, the first thing that I get is the failsafe warning. So like I said before, if you forget to assign failsafe settings, you will get that warning as a safety feature. Now if you're using Express LRS Crossfire or a Flysky receiver, to prevent a model mismatch, the receiver ID is now functional. So if I go to the model setup, if you see this first model, I'm using a Flysky receiver and I have the receiver number set to zero. And I haven't set up the failsafe yet, which I have to. So, so the receiver in this APM drone that I have is bound to model one with the receiver number set to zero. And let's say if I have another drone like this, in which I'm also using a Flyscar receiver, then to prevent flying one model with different settings, uh, this receiver ID is very helpful. And we'll take a look at this how it affects. So to demonstrate, I have two models for my RC car, in one of which I have a Flyscar receiver that I use for a relay between the UHF system. So what I'll do is I'll bind a receiver each for a model and then I'll show you how the receiver ID works. So let me bind this receiver to model 4. So I'll enter model 4. select the correct protocol that I need and I'll select receiver number 201 zero, 00 is assigned for the APM cord and I'll insert the binding plug and just power up the receiver with this ST link just to bind so the receiver is in binding mode so 01 is selected I'll select bind and click OK. So the receiver is bound. And now I'll bind the other receiver for the other model. So you can see that the LED on the receiver is blinking, which means it's not bound to the transmitter. That's because the receiver number for this model is set to 02. And I bound this to 01. So for example, if I just change the number to 01, you can see that it's bound. And if I set this to 02, the connection is broken. So let me bind this receiver to this model. So now if I switch between the receiver number, the appropriate receiver will be bound. So 01 for this receiver and 02 is for this receiver. So the point of this receiver ID or the receiver number feature is that it will prevent from binding a model to a wrong receiver. So that way you don't fly with the wrong settings. And this function can be looked at from a safety point of view. So now it's functional in this radio transmitter and not just with the Flysky protocol. It's also implemented with Crossfire protocol. So if you're using Crossfire or ExpressLRS, you can now 
set the receiver ID for that as well. So let's quickly take a look at that as well. Now I've already set the receiver ID to zero for this. And the other Express LRS model that I have is a Cinevoop for which the receiver ID is set to 01. So let's test this. So here I have my Cinevoop. Obviously I'll have to plug in the R9M. And now the binding is also a lot faster between the Express LRS transmitter and receiver because there have been some changes in the Express LRS menu which has made it faster. So I have the FRSky R9M and R9MX receiver in the drone and both of which don't have the Wi-Fi feature with Express LRS firmware. But as if your receiver supports Wi-Fi, then you can set the receiver ID from the Express LRS website. But as if your receiver doesn't have Wi-Fi then, you will have to set the receiver ID in the external RF settings. And I flashed the latest version of Express LRS 3 on my transmitter module and receiver and it's working with this radio transmitter. So the Express LRS menu in the radio transmitter is compatible with the latest Express LRS version as well. So that's a uh, good news. And in here, uh, currently model match is off. I'll enable that. And if you see that ID is set to zero and in here in the external RF settings, I have the receiver ID set to zero as well. If I change this, the link between the transmitter module and the receiver is still maintained, but I won't be able to control the module. And you can even hear the beep. So there is no control as such. And here it's displaying that model mismatch. If I want to reassign the model number to ID1, what I can do is uh, I can toggle between model match on and off. And now it's bound properly so I can arm the cord. So I've just shown you guys how the model match can be used on the single model that is. Now next in the Express LRS menu, you can see that for individual settings or parameters, the units are visible. For example, the packet rate or the refresh rate, which is in Hertz. Uh, you also have the decibel value in brackets so if i change this to 100 hertz or 50 hertz and so on the power level is also displayed over here lower the packet rate uh, higher the range if you have a higher refresh rate then the range will be slightly shorter then for the telemetry ratio we have uh, bytes per second this is the standard speed so 166 bytes per second if you select a lower ratio the speed will go up so that's uh, 3921 bytes per second at 1 is to 2 telemetry ratio at 1 is to 4 the speed is uh, 1920 bytes per second so at 1 is to 128 uh, the speed is actually quite low that's just 31 bytes per second then model match which is covered in the tx power earlier we had to enter the menu to see what the power level is so the max power can be adjusted from here 
and that's in milliwatts. So if you want to just confirm what the power level is, you don't have to enter the menu all the time. You can just check it from the main screen itself. Similarly for the video transmitter admin or the VTX admin, uh, just like the smart audio, you have the channel band, the frequency and the power level. So if I enter this, I have the band, I can change this, select the channel which I want and the power level. The VTX in this drone has four power levels so I can set it to number four. And it also has pit mode which is currently activated from this switch P. If I want I can enable it from here as well. So some of these settings are helpful and they will save you some time. Wi-Fi connectivity if your uh, system has Wi-Fi and other devices just as before. So the Express LRS menu has the units displayed for individual settings and parameters. The values for the TX power and the VTX admin which are displayed here uh, are quite useful at least for me so I like that. So other than this the rest of the improvements are within the software itself so those cannot be demonstrated as such and not to forget the fail safe warning so let me just uh, cover this as well this model is for this APM cord that I have and to demonstrate I'll power up the drone You could see that the motors were still running. So in a fail safe application if I want the drone to drop or if I want the drone to oh, get into the loiter mode I can set those settings in machine planner but if you're flying an aircraft or an RC car or anything else in which you have to set the fail safe from the radio transmitter then this is very useful so in the model setup where it says fail safe for example if I set this to receiver and save all and if I restart you can see that the fail safe warning is not displayed anymore because we have some option selected in the fail safe other than not set so the radio assumes that the fail safe has been set up so most likely if you have an aircraft or a RC car or anything that requires custom fail safe from the radio transmitter then you can set that up from this uh, custom option so select set and click on ok and if you hold ok then the values will be automatically set so you might have to set this to zero again so hold the ok button to reset to zero so once set is highlighted just click on ok once and you will enter this fail safe settings option if you hold the ok button then whatever the channel values and the switch position is it will automatically be selected that's all that to cover in this video also there is a good news shared from Janik some new features will be added and those would be quite useful I suppose so let's see what we get until then thanks a lot for watching this video and if you have any other questions you can comment them I'll see you guys in the next one